This is going to get loud here for a second. And we are recording now as far as in, you should be able to hit stream. But I'm just getting the station up. Looks like you got a stream there. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rick Phillips for CampusNation.com, the sports animal, your home for high school and college sports, and also WZAA 106.9 LPFM in Jeffersonville, Ohio. Uh, we're getting a little late start here, but we are already into this first game, uh, the uh, Ohio Christian uh, University and uh, also the Cincinnati Christian University girls. The ladies are going at it. We're just trying to get the station online, but I'm going to give it. I'm going to turn it over to you. You can start to play by play. We are and have been recording video in that, so we are streaming over the internet. I'm just going to get the station up. And welcome to Jill Rendell Court here on the campus of Cincinnati Christian University. Is Kylie Bomar gets the first two of the night? Bomar comes into that into this game, averaging a little over 13 points per contest to lead the way for CCU. Of course, CCU out without Bailey Wallace for the rest of the year. Team's leading scorer and team leading rebounder with 14.6 rebounds uh, per game as Bransford has it at the top of the key. 7.33 to go in the opening quarter. Each team with a couple early turnovers as Bomar drops back in the quarter. Well, and Hill looking for her first points of the night as she's 0 for 2 from three point land as once again Ohio Christian able to get the rebound as Baird has it and she hands it off to Parsons. And Parsons. Able to dump it off to Roberts, and that's going to be a bad pass. Off the fingertips of Cox, and it's going to be Eagle basketball with 7-10 to go in the opening quarter. Still 2-0 in favor of the home Eagles. CCU comes in 3-12 on the season. Ohio Christian comes in at 8-9 each team. 2-2 two two in their last four. Bransford has it on the near side wing. That should have been a kick ball. They're just going to say it went out of bounds off the Trailblazers. It's going to be CCU ball under, underneath the basket. As we get our first look at Sailor Norton, the freshman, straight up the road up on 75 out of Mason High School. 
The local product checks back in the lineup, comes in averaging eight points a game. It kind of been in a slump the last couple. And speaking of hot shooters, Tolson misses that three, but caught away to get the rebound. Tolson averaging 20 points a game the last four games, including 52% from way downtown. She had 18 in the first half and the loss against Brescia the other night. And there's a good turnover there by the Trailblazers. As Puckett was able to pick it off, she gets it over to Cox. It kicks it out on the far wing to Bear. She goes for the three. A little too strong. Against Russia, the other. Rebound comes out to Caldwell. Now Bomar out of Dayton, Ohio, picks it up. Quickly gets it to Tolson. Caldwell and a little too quick as she uh, shuffles the feet. And with 6.21 to go, that'll be a turnover. The Trailblazers still just 2-0 in favor of the home Eagles. And we are now on uh, WZAA. So we've got everybody up and operating, and we welcome our audience there in uh, Jeffersonville in Fayette County. Uh, we are here at Cincinnati Christian uh, University, and we've got the Ohio Christian University ladies against the Cincinnati Christian University ladies. As this one gets taken out of bounds off of Roberts, has it taken away by Coldwell, but it was out of bounds off Coldwell, and the Trailblazers keep possession. 16 to go on the shot clock, 6.06 to go in the opening quarter, still 2 nothing in favor of the home Eagles. Baird gets it in, just in underneath the five-second mark. Parsons now has it at the top. Nice ditch, dish down into Roberts. She goes to the left hand, and she got it her first two of the night. She averages 12 points, eight rebounds a game, and we're tied at two. As Tolson gets her first two of the night, she averages 11 on the year, but her last four, she's averaging 20. Puckett along the far wing on a nice back cut, and that's an easy up and under for Baird. Her first two of the night, she comes in averaging nine and a half as Bransford brings it across the timeline, 5.25 to go. As Bransford has that one blocked away, they're going to say it went out of bounds. It's going to stay with the Eagles with 5.22 to go in the opening quarter, 4-2 in favor of CCU as Bransford will inbound it as CCU for the radio listeners moving right to left in the home wide as Caldwell squares up a triple, a little too short. Rebound comes out to the Trailblazers. They move left to right with the black on black with the white trim, white numbers. With blue Ohio Christian as they work the weave out top to Dinsmore, who quickly gets it over to Puckett along the far wing. As She's going to have a turnover she'd like to have back, trying to get it down to Roberts, and it'll be CCU ball with 4.57 to go in the opening quarter. Bransford in across the timeline, trying to get the Eagle offense set up as we're inside 20 seconds to go on the shot clock. Along the near side, that's Parrott as CCU starts to make changes, gets it into Caldwell. Parrott this time. She's going to shoot the three. It's a little too strong. Tolson with the backside offensive rebound for CCU. Is now Parrott tries to get the offense back, set back up. Bransford now along the near side. Wing goes in the lane. Spins. Able to hold the pivot foot. She got it. Her first two of the night. She averages 10. And the Eagles lead once again 6-4. to four. Puck it. Working it out on top, swings it over to Dinsmore, who checked in the lineup for the first time for the Trailblazers. Dinsmore, quick three-pointer, a little too strong, hits the backside of the rim, but a nice rebound by the Trailblazers, but unable to keep possession as Barrett as she double dribbles as we get wholesale changes for CCU, including our first look at Petty. Of course, a new addition along with 23 Harper. Just her second game as her first game came up against Brescia. She had a couple points, a couple rebounds. Did Harper. 3.53 to go in the opening quarter. Bransford once again runs the point out across the timeline. Quickly into the lane. Right there's Petty with her first touch as an eagle. It's it over to Parrott. Works the far side. Hand check there by Bear. Dumps it into Stephanie Hill. Hill backs her way in, has that ball stripped away. Nice steal there by Puckett. Quickly gets it over to Dinsmore, who sets it up to Baird. Now she's going to reset the offense. 20 to go on the shot clock. Of course, Ohio Christian coming off a 39-38 win. 
Over Carlo, as Dismore pulls up and that gets nothing but air. Rebound Petty for CCU as Hill looking to push the tempo a little bit for the Eagles. Out across the timeline as we approach three minutes to go in the opening quarter. And Bransford, a little too quick on the shuffle of the feet and they quickly turn it right back over to the Trailblazers as Kylie Bomar checks back into the Eagle lineup. 6-4, 3.04 to go in the opening quarter. Baird out across the timeline. Checked up there by Bomar. As Cox works it across to Dinsmore. Dinsmore being guarded by Petty. Quick hand off to Baird. Has it tipped away, but able to recover. Back over to Cox along the far wing. 17-footer, a little too strong. Good offensive rebound there by Dinsmore. A quick no-look pass. Rebound, backside Cox. And now Baird's going to reset the offense. As Puckett now, deep three ball, too strong. Rebound, comes out to Stephanie Hill. Now we're going to have a loose ball on the floor, and it's going to be a jump ball. Possession is going to go to CCU. As Caldwell is going to check back into the lineup for CCU as Ohio Christian with a couple quality looks, just unable to knock them down. 2.21 to go in the opening quarter. Kylie Bomar. Over half court, she's picked up there by Dinsmore. She hands it off to Parrott. Hill now has it at the elbow, dumps it into Caldwell. No look pass to Parrott, 15 footer. She got it, her first two of the night. And that's the biggest lead tonight for either side. It's at four, 155 to go in the opening quarter. Eight four in favor of the home Eagles. Near side, Dinsmore as they work the weave around to Cox. Quickly dumps it into Roar. Back out to Baird. Has it poked away, but she quickly gains possession back at the top. As Puckett hands it off to Dinsmore. Into the lane. No problems. Lays this one up and in. Dinsmore averages 12. She has two. And it's back down to a two-point deficit for the Trailblazers as Kylie Bomar quickly goes in the lane. And that's going to be turned over. Picked up by Cox, loose ball. She comes back in a two on four, but she's going to push the tempo over to Dinsmore. As Baird now has it at the top. She works her way into the lane, throws this one up and in. Two strong, backside rebound by Parrott. Quickly up to Hill. Hill in a one on five. She has to wait for reinforcements. But Caldwell has it, and she resets the offense back over to Kylie Bomar. Over to Parrott, 17-footer. That's too short. Rebound, backside, Dinsmore. Has it poke checked away, but it's going to stay with the Trailblazers with just 50.8 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Still 8-6 in favor of home, Cincinnati Christian. Cox, she averages 6.5 points a game. She brings the ball up to court for the Trailblazers. Dinsmore has it. On the near side wing, swings it over to Roberts. A quiet two points tonight as she misses Dinsmore on a back, back screen. And with 38 seconds to go, it's going to be Eagle basketball. As Roberts comes into this game, averaging 11.5 points, eight rebounds per game, does big 23. Bomar out across the timeline, hands it off to Parrott, swings it over to Tolson. She wants a three, and that's short. Rebound, Cox, she's doubled, but able to get it out in transition to Peel. Guarded there by Bomar. She tries to take her off the dribble, and she slid the pivot foot, and that's going to be another turnover against the Trailblazers. And with 14 seconds to go, CCU can hold for the final shot. Look for the Eagles to go at around 10 seconds as Bomar picks up the ball that was rolled slowly out to half court. Nine to go, gets the pick from Coldwell, has it poke checked away, now she dribbles it off her foot. bomar has got to go, she's got three seconds, dumps it in for Parrott at the buzzer, and that's going to do it for the opening 10 minutes here from Jill Rendell Court on the campus of Cincinnati Christian University as CCU leads at the end of one, eight to six. CCU in that opening quarter 
Balance scoring throughout the eight points. Four players with a bucket each. Parrott, Bomar, Tolson, and Bransford each with a bucket for the home Eagles. Same situation for Ohio Christian. All three of their buckets spread out as Dinsmore, Baird, and Roberts all with a bucket each as we get ready for quarter number two. And, of course, at the half, Coach Knapp of CCU will uh, – will join us for our halftime festivities. And then, of course, don't forget game two tonight. It'll be the men's turn as CCU takes on Ohio Christian. Ohio Christian. Inbounded as they continue to move left to right here. 9.58 to go in the half. Puckett has it at the top of the key. She's going to hand it off to Dinsmore. As Dinsmore works it back over to Puckett. As now Roberts has it on the elbow working on Caldwell. Backs her in. Spin move. Tough shot in the lane. Rebound comes out to Kylie Bomar looking for Bransford. In transition, stops and pops, and Bransford got it. Turf, she's got four. She averages 10, and the lead's back up to four. Ties the largest lead of the night for the Eagles. Dinsmore, she wants a quick triple, and that's too strong. We get contact, but the officials let him play through a Caldwell out across the timeline. Over to Kylie Bomar as Caldwell picks up the loose ball. Hill too strong. Caldwell comes up with the rebound. And she has it stolen away by Dinsmore. And a two-on-two -two coming back to Peel. Lefty, she got it. Her first two of the night. The deficit's back down to two for the Trailblazers with 8.50 to go in the half. As Bomar works over to Bransford, Tolson, very quiet night for a person averaging 20 points a game the last four games as Caldwell picks up her dribble, and that's going to be a three-second violation on CCU, and the Trailblazers are going to take it over with 8.38 to go. In the half, trailing just 10 to 8. Peel brings it across the timeline as Ohio Christian continues to move left to right for our audio listeners on 106.9 WZAA as this one goes on the far wing. Too short. Rebound comes out to Caldwell. Gets it over to Bransford. Three on two for CCU. If they hurry instead, Bransford's going to pull the wall back out. Kylie Bomar wide open. Three too strong, but an offensive rebound by the Eagles. Bransford, and usually Kylie Bomar does not miss that many shots, especially that wide open as Bransford works it on the block. Back over to Tolson. She wants a three, and she gets a three, and the Eagle lead is up to five. Tolson, she has five. Of course, she had, she's been hitting 52% of her triples the last four games. Has Tolson. She had 18 in that first half against Brescia. And that loss last Tuesday night here at Jill Rendell Court. As Dinsmore has it at the top of the key, 7.35 to go. Puckett into the lane, drops it off for Dinsmore. She averages 12, and she's got four now. The, lead, the deficit's back down to three for the Trailblazers. Bransford has it on the far side wing. Over to Tolson. Finds a wide open Bransford. She passes it up the shot. Now Tolson, a wide open three. She got another one. She's got eight. It's up to a six-point lead, the largest of the night for CCU. And now you see why she's been averaging 20 points a game the last four. And with seven minutes to go, CCU is trying to get a little separation as Dinsmore has to save it, but she turns it over to Bransford. Over to Tolson, Bomar, she's going to lay this one up and in, and it might be timeout time for the Trailblazers as all of a sudden they're down eight and a quick 6-0 run for CCU. Dinsmore gets it to Puckett, has it at the top as they try to work motion on the backside, 6.35 to go, and that's a turnover to Tolson. She's pushing the pace. She's got Bomar to her right. Instead, she's going to pull up. Now she tried to dump it into Cole while Bomar picks up the loose ball, but a little too strong rebound comes out to Puckett. Dinsmore now on a one-on-four throws this one up, and Hill with the rebound 
as Dinsmore was a little too far to be able to get that foul call. Hill has it on the near side. She waits for reinforcements. Bransford, she wants a triple. That's too strong. Rebound comes out to Peel with 6.05 to go in the half. Dinsmore gets it over to Roberts. Roberts averaging 12 and 8, but just two points so far tonight on one of three shooting. Puckett has it. Nice back cut by Peel. She already has two tonight. Gets it over to Dinsmore, and that's a that's a soft pass that got stolen by Bransford. Two on one for the Eagles. Drops it back off to Hill. She got it. And Hill has her first two of the night. It's a 10-point game as the Eagles are on an 8-0 run with 5.38 to go in half. Begin the next step of your life at Ohio Christian University, one of the nation's fastest growing nonprofit universities. Earn an accredited associate, bachelor, or master's degree entirely online or attend class once a week at one of 11 convenient locations. Programs range from business and human services to IT and RN to BSN and more. Call today, 855-OCU-GRAD or on the web at enroll.ohiochristian.edu. And welcome back to Jill Renner Quarter on the campus of Cincinnati Christian University alongside Bill ba Rayback. My name's Rob Roberts. As CCU all of a sudden, a quick little 8-0 run, they've extended the lead to 10, but uh, Ohio Christians had their chances, just unable to hit some uh, open jump shots early. You know, I think at this point, Rob, what I've seen is Dinsmore has been strong to the hoop, but she's not getting a lot of help. Uh, their shooting from the outside, meaning Ohio Christian, has been kind of shaky. And I think that uh, some fast break opportunities for the Cougars have turned into an opportunity to blow this out to a 10-point lead. Cox drops it back for Baird, and she's going to bring it across the timeline. 5.30 to go for our radio, radio listeners. Moving left to right from our vantage point here, just right of center court at Jill Rendell Court. Roberts has it along the near side over to Baird. She's guarded by Kylie Bomar. Now the leading score for CCU is Bailey Wallace. 14 and 8 out for the year with a knee injury. Big loss for CCU. This is their second game without her as Cox is too strong. But a nice rebound by Baird for Ohio Christian. Ohio Christian did a good job getting on that loose ball. As Puckett now has it along the near side as Ohio Christian's trying to work the ball inside out now as Roberts goes up and under. And now rebounds have come out to Kylie Beaumont, the Dayton, Ohio Dunbar product. She drops it back over to Harper, her second game with CCU. Bransford kicks it back over to Kylie Bomar. Bomar, young sophomore, that when she puts it all together, she's going to be a special ball player. As Bransford wide open on a three, two strong rebound, Kylie Bomar, but it slipped out of her hands. Cox picks it up for Ohio Christian, pushing the pace over to Puckett. Puckett, she wants a deep three, and that's going to be short rebound, Bransford. As CCU looks to push the pace in a four on three. Nobody picked up Bransford until it was too late, but she misses. Nice drive, but she's got to finish on that. You got to finish. As Dinsmore now drops it off, and she's going to turn it over. And Sailor Norton, the Mason, Ohio product, turns it right back over to Puckett, gets it over to Roberts. Montrell lays this one up and in, and she's got four. And that snaps an 8-0 run, and it's back to an 8-point deficit for Ohio Christian. Cincinnati Christian wants doesn't want to give them too many quick transition points like that, or they'll let them get right back into this game really quick. And that's been the one. Akili this year has been the turnovers. Not, not just turnovers, but unforced turnovers, and we've kind of seen that early as Sailor Norton just lost the handle, picked up by Dinsmore. She's pushing the pace. She has a streaking bear, but nice. Nice save. Nice there. hustle there by Bomar to get back to be able to turn that ball over with 3.20 to go in the half. And now Bomar is going to slow up the pace a little bit, get the offense set for the Eagles. Into the lane, wide open layup. And nice drive. Kylie Bomar has six. She averages 13 points on the season. And it's right back to a 10-point Cincinnati Christian lead. As you said, Rob, she's got a chance to be that special kind of player that can take it to the hole and – and draw fouls, and boy, that makes your outside game a lot better when you have a player like that. And Puckett has along the far wing. She's guarded by Bransford, drops it into Baird. She goes into the lane, puts this one up a little too strong. Rebound comes out to Burmacher. As now Bomar slowing up the pace just a little bit, 240 to go in the half. As Bomar gets it over. 
to Harper. Harper squicked right over to Bransford. Bransford into the lane, double team. Harper, 17-footer, that's short. Rebound, Dinsmore. And right now, Dinsmore is a one-man crew for Ohio Christian. Yeah, I would say. Already approaching 10 rebounds as Cox throws this one up and open over. And that's going to be too strong. But we have a foul on the floor. Number 22, Fearmacher. That's going to be her first as CCU comes in with a hockey-style line change as they roll four <laughs> substitutions in here, and including Petty getting her first action as an eagle. She's going to roll in with, with Tolson and Caldwell. And that's a great move when you see a short bench to you know tire them out, bring in fresh legs, and that's going to pay off in the second half of the game. As you can see, the slow style that Ohio Christian's really been trying to slow up the pace. And they have. We saw that with that last game, a 39-38 win over Carlo, as well as Puckett drops in the lane. Nice spin move to the left, and Puckett has her first two of the night. She averages nine and a half, and it's back to an eight-point Cincinnati Christian lead, 154 to go in the half. Yeah, I think that's better when Puckett's working on the inside. I've seen her take a, a couple unadvised three-pointers, and... Uh, you know, you like to see your big guy be able to do that. As Biermacher picks up her dribble. Oh, nice pass. Back side to Hill. Oh, but nice, Dinsmore, nice another steal. She's going to push the pace. They have a two-on-two -two coming back. Nice behind the back, 14-footer. She got it. Dinsmore's got six. She's halfway to her season average of 12. And that quick 4-0 spurt has this a two-possession game. 22 home CCU, 16 visiting Ohio Christian. Tolson gets it into Caldwell as they run the splits. Over to Tolson, wide open three, short, rebound Caldwell. And I think you see Dinsmore a little gassed as usually she comes up with that rebound. Caldwell too strong. Rebound, though, comes out. Yeah, Dinsmore's not getting a lot of time to recuperate. And as I said, the short bench may catch up with Ohio Christian as the Cougars keep on uh, bringing fresh bodies. As, of course, we'll be joined by CCU assistant coach Napo at the half as Puckett takes this one straight to the hoop. She's got a quick four, and this 6-0 run has this a four-point game as we approach 30 seconds to go in a half. Stephanie Hill has it along the far side, swings it over. Caldwell has it on the near side wing, guarded by Dinsmore. Over to Petty. That's Tolson, dumps it into Caldwell, 18 seconds to go. Turn around, 14-footer. Puckett rebound, hands over to Dinsmore, and Ohio Christian should hold this for the final shot of the half as we're at 10 seconds to go. Baird has it far side, puts her strength into the dribble, hands it off to Dinsmore. Dinsmore tried to cross-court pass. Instead, turns it over. Stephanie Hill on the floor, and that'll do it for the first half as CCU with 14 points. In that second quarter, and they're going to have a 26-18 or 22-18 lead at the half. Balance scoring, though, for each side uh, for uh, CCU and for uh, Ohio Christian as well. Yeah, uh, I've been impressed by Tolson. I think um, there's really not an answer for her on Ohio Christian's side. And if she has success and hits a few more threes, I think that's going to be the difference here. Is it just doesn't appear like you had – your observation about Ohio Christian, a lot of half-court offense, but unless they're getting the ball inside, they're not having a lot of success scoring from the perimeter. The one thing they have had success has Ohio Christian is dribble penetration in the end of the lane. Yes, they have. They just got to start finishing those uh, around the hoop, but they're having they're having the opportunities, and, and we're waiting for the uh, official stats to come over to half. But I think you're going to see part of that around uh, around 30 percent shooting. Yeah, but a lot of those, if we had a shot chart, you'd see point blank opportunity. And, oh yeah. And that's all you ask from a coaching staff is, hey, we're getting quality shots. Eventually, they're going to fall. When you're getting shots in side six feet and you're not dropping them uh, you know you you've got to take advantage of that if you're going to stay in a close game like this uh, as I say I think the Eagles uh, have done a pretty nice job and then they've missed a, uh, a few of the easy shots themselves I think the team that corrects that in the second half is definitely going to have uh, the advantage and then the other advantage is which team can take care of the basketball we saw a lot of unforced turnovers you know a turnover is going to be a part of it but it's those unforced those mental turnovers that will have you running gassers in the next practice yeah rob i don't think any coach uh whether it be cincinnati christian or ohio christian can be happy about the ball security at this point and i would say that 
that's going to be addressed uh, in the locker rooms by both coaches. As Coach Knapp makes her way up, we'll grab her for uh, for a couple minutes, and then we'll get you set up uh, for the second half as well. And it's going to be interesting to get her point of view, especially uh, with the turnovers and, and having a 10-point lead right there right before the end of the half and kind of having it and losing, losing a lot of that momentum. Sure. Thanks for joining us again at the half as we see Jared having problems with the printer for two straight <laughs> yeah. games. Yeah. But kind of a tale of two first halves. You're able to get that 10-point lead, but you lose some of that momentum there at the end of the half. Yeah, I mean, I think we just got tired, which, you know, fatigue set in, and we tried to get some subs in there for fresh legs, but inexcusable getting scored on in transition. We need to get back and just reiterate that to them at halftime that, you know, we can't get scored on in transition like that. Now, you guys were able to get some transition of your own. You were able to get Tolson uh, going a little bit when you had that, that lead build up. Really balanced, balanced scoring, five players scoring for you. Yeah, I mean, we're not scoring the ball inside as much as we'd like to. Um, it's been pretty difficult. You know, Tree isn't really finding the back of the basket either. So um, what we're trying to do, we need to work it inside at least and try to get some more open shots, but we're not getting the easy looks that we usually get. Now, this is just your second game without Bailey Wallace, and there's going to be some of that uh, of that transition. Is that just what you're seeing there with that lack of scoring in the paint? Yeah, I mean, she obviously was a huge threat inside with her size and abilities, um, but we, I mean, it's next person up. We <laughs> yeah. got to, I mean, Shay during our Huntington game, she scored on the inside. So we know we have players that are capable of scoring inside. They just need to find the rhythm. And then on the other side, Ohio Christian did have success in uh, dribble penetration. How do you kind of isolate that in the second half and kind of put it into that? Yeah. Um, we need to just tell them they need to stay higher, um, really try to keep them pinned on the sideline, which is what we practice um, for over scout. So really just telling them to – Keep them on that sideline, and we're getting face cut way too much, which is allowing them to have easy baskets. And then second half adjustment to pick up the to win and get out of here and get three and two in the last five. Stop turning the ball over. <laughs> All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. And that's Coach Knapp and uh, for the CCU broadcast. She always joins us uh, at the half, uh, as we always appreciate her time. But you know, she's very, she's always very blunt. Hey, yeah. we stop turning yeah. it over. We're going to have, a, we're going to have a chance to win. But I'm also sure that's the same. Uh, thing that's being preached by Ohio Christian is, well, hey, stop turning the ball over and we're going to have a chance to win this game. Yeah, I mean, if we, and, and you talked about it, Rob, what oh, I, what Cincinnati Christian has to do is simply they have to finish when they get bunny layups, yep. and then they also have to take care of the ball. And if they do those two things, uh, they would have a much bigger lead than they do right now. And, you know, on the other side, we can say the same thing about Ohio Christian. They've missed a lot of inside shots. Their ball security hasn't been real uh, real good. And, you know, they do run that half-court offense. But at this point, I think that can be as bad as good for them because uh, they're not being very very proficient with their opportunities. Speaking of turnovers, Ohio Christian with 14 in the first half, CCU with 12. Not a stat either coach is going to be happy with. Yeah. Scoring for CCU, Boma, or Parrott with two, Bomar with six, Hill with two, Tolson with eight. Transfer with four. You add it all up. That's 22 points for the home Eagles for visiting Ohio Christian. Two for Peel. Six for Dinsmore. Four for Puckett. Two for Baird. And a quiet four points for Roberts, who averages 12 and 8. You add all that up, and you have 18 points for the visiting Ohio Christian University. Yeah. Uh, you know, as I say, it'll be interesting what co both coaches do for their adjustments, but I think the team that's able to come out, settle into a, a rhythm, and get a run. I mean, the way they're, you know, both offensive have been kind of stymied at this point. If one team gets into a run where they get a 10 to 12 point uh, lead, I think it's going to be difficult for the other team to get back, back into the game unless they start uh, securing the ball and making the easy shots. It's definitely going to be who gets the run able to extend the lead yes. and hold on. We kind of saw that from CCU. They got the 10-point lead. Looked like they were getting ready to put this game away in a quick 6-0 run, and that's what it's kind of going to be. It's just it, who gets that run and can sustain that lead. Yeah, and, you know, more so in college basketball than in the pros. I mean, you'll see a professional lead of 20 disappear in two minutes. But then here in the college game, if you get that 20 uh, – a 22 point lead on a run it's difficult to come back and, and get into the game 
But we're going to step aside for a few minutes to our uh, fans here on CampusNation.com and WZAA 106.9. Once again, our score at the half is the home to Cincinnati Christian University Eagles 22 and visiting Ohio Christian 18 as you're watching women's college basketball for Bill Ray Rayback. I am Rob Roberts. We'll join you momentarily for the start of the third quarter. Thank you, Rob. Six point nine WZAA LP Jeffersonville. going to get loud here for a second. And we are recording now as far as in, you should be able to hit stream. But I'm just getting the station up. Looks like you got a stream there. going to get loud here for a second. And we are recording now as far as in, you should be able to hit stream. But I'm just getting the station up.
Looks like he got a stream there. Begin the next step of your life at Ohio Christian University, one of the nation's fastest growing nonprofit universities. Earn an accredited associate, bachelor, or master's degree entirely online or attend class once a week at one of 11 convenient locations. Programs range from business and human services to IT and RN to BSN and more. Call today, 855-OCU-GRAD or on the web at enroll.ohiochristian.edu. Okay, Rob, we're back. And welcome back to the broadcast booth as we get ready for quarter number three alongside Bill Rayback. My name is Rob Roberts as we welcome you into CampusNation.com and on 106.9 WZAA for our radio listener, CCU with a 22-18 lead at the half as we get ready to start period number three. Cincinnati Christian now will be moving left to right from our vantage point for our radio listeners. They come in with the white on white, those purple numbers with the silver trim. Ohio Christian with the black on black look, white numbers, but Ohio Christian in blue with the blue Nike sneakers as well as Kaimi Bomar takes the inbound pass and we're on our way. Quarter number three from Jill Rendell Court as CCU looks to improve to 4 and 12 on the season. Ohio Christian looking to get back to 500 with a win. That'd get him back to 9 and 9 as Bransford misses a bunny, but it's tipped back out to Coldwell. For the CCU offensive rebound. As Bransford now works it back in. That's a bad turnover trying to hit Tolson. And Bears there to pick it up. Bransford made a nice play tipping the ball out to one of her players and then turns the ball right over. He can't have that. Puckett has it. She had a nice first half with four points. All right there at the end of the half is Baird misses a bunny. Rebound called one. It's going to be a jump ball. And it's going to keep it here with Ohio Christian. 9-19 to go in the third quarter, still 22-18. Yeah, Ohio Christian will get an opportunity here and they cut it down to two, and um, the Cougars are going to have to fi figure a way to get it in there, be calm, and lay it in. And uh, they've had those opportunities. They just have to capitalize on them. Norton with the early substitution. She checks in for a hill just 41 seconds into the third quarter. As... Robert swings over to Puckett, swings it alongside to Parsons. She checks in for the first time tonight and has this nice front defense there by Caldwell. And here comes CCU. Caldwell has it. She squares up for a three. She got it. Caldwell, her first three of the night, her first three points of the night. She averages six, and the Eagle lead is up to seven. It's been as high as ten in the first half. Nice shot by Caldwell. Caldwell, one of those rhythm shooters. As once she sees a couple go down, they they come in buckets as Parson tries to answer. That's too strong. Here comes Bransford. She's looking to push the pace in a three-on-three. Three. Drops it back for Tolson. Over to Caldwell. Swings over to wide open. Bomar. She misses a wide open oh, triple. Nice rebound. But Caldwell with the offensive rebound. And big three ball there by Skylar Norton. 
And she's kind of going through the, those freshman, freshman mid-season slump, trying to get her legs back under. But when she gets it going, she was averaging 10 points a game just a couple weeks ago. Is the freshman product Norton, freshman mate out of Mason, Ohio, just up the road here on 75, as she's taken off the dribble there. Yeah, I think freshmen find it hard, especially in the middle of the year with that transition to playing the longer games. Bransford gets it over to Caldwell, almost had her over and back. Bomar has it along the near side, guarded by Baird. 15 seconds to go on the shot clock as she works her off the dribble in the lane. Ooh, nice Wild kick. shot. It's a nice crossover dribble. She's got to finish that. Clean first half for the officials. Only one foul in that half as Roberts has it into the lane. And as soon as we say that, Bransford is going to pick up her first foul tonight team's first of the quarter and that's going to send Roberts to the line. She averages 12. She has four. This is the first free throw for either side tonight. And that was a nice duck under by Roberts and she picked up the foul on the way to the hoop. A little too strong on that one. She gets one more though. 740 to go in the third quarter. 25-18 CCU. She misses a pair. Rebound called while hands it off to Bransford. As nobody picks her up, but she has that one sent into the first row by Roberts. Good hustle to get back after missing the free throw to get the clean block. CCU ball underneath the basket with 7.34 to go. Yeah, Roberts got on top of the ball. There was no question that was a block. Two hustle plays, one by each side to get back. The first one by Kylie Bomar, which would have been a one-on-none breakaway. Then we saw the good hustle there by Roberts, right. able to get back and block. And that's what you like to see is, is the hustle getting back uh, on transition defense. Yeah, coaches can always work with that as long as they're giving you the effort. As Parrott checks back in the lineup, Norton swings over to Caldwell. She wants another triple, a little too strong. Backside rebound by Puckett as Cox pushes the pace for OCU. As she stands on the CCU logo, spins her way in the, into the lane, drops it off for Roberts, and she's got two. Her first two of the second half, she's got six for the game. Nice little, nice little assist by Cox. A little underhand flip, and Roberts finished. As Bomar, oh. and that's going to be plus one. Kylie Bomar, the Dunbar product, and she'll have a chance at a plus one or eighth point of the night. Kylie gets a hoop and some harm there. Nice finish. That's, that's Actually, the Winton Woods product out locally, out of Winton Woods. That's the the old fashioned three point play, Rob. <laughs> as Bomar looking to make it, as you said, the old fashioned way, she does. And then just like that, it's back up to an eight point lead. Every time Ohio Christian, they'll get it down to four to five points. Yep. And then CCU with that quick burst ability, able to extend it back out to eight. And the blink of an eye as Dinsmore able to break the pressure. Backside Puckett up and under. And that's going to be free throw time for Puckett. Yep. And that's going to be on Caldwell. It's her first. And we've seen a better production out of Puckett as we talked about at the end of the first half when she's going to the hoop that's her her biggest uh, asset when she's shooting threes from way outside that's obviously not her strong point as Puckett misses the first 0 for 3 as a team it wasn't even a threes it was five feet seven feet beyond that three yeah it was NBA (laughs) three-pointers plus some but as she says she doesn't miss them in practice yeah (laughs) that's right as she gets the second one, one of four as a team, one of two individually, and it's down to a seven-point Cincinnati Christian lead. Bransford has it along near side. Norton into the lane, drops back over to Bransford. And she works her way in the lane. Caldwell picks up her dribble over to Norton. Handoff, Norton into the lane. And we're going to get a hand check on Cox, and that'll be her first. Cincinnati Christian needs to work on their spacing on the perimeter. It, it, it seems like two time, too many times they get too close together, try to spread the ball out a little bit. And that's the one thing, and we'll see it in the men's game too uh, from the CCU Eagle team as, as somebody that follows it. It's a very young team, a lot of freshmen and sophomores, and sometimes it, it takes a while to learn how to play with each other and, and play the college style in the college game. Right. 
Right. Uh, just totally different offenses, spacing, and oh, yeah. uh, you got to remember the other person, they're on scholarship too. And those those passes have, have to be crisp at this level. That lazy pass is going to be a turnover. That speed of the game is the first thing you yep. have to get used yep, to. Is for sure. Oh, Bransford has it stolen by Densmore on the breakaway, and she got it. Densmore, her first two of the second half, she's got eight for the game, and it's a quick 4-0 run, and it's down to a five-point deficit. Densmore is definitely a solid player for Ohio Christian. One of those stat stuffers. She does a little bit of everything as Harper. Nice oh, backside nice to Norton, and Norton, she's not going to miss that one. Her first two of the night, she averages eight to Sailor, and that's an answer. That quick 4-0 run by Ohio Christian back up to a seven-point eagle lead. Nice rotation on that. Get the easy bucket. There's a long three ball, two strong rebound. Parrott, Parsons, still looking for her first points of the night. She averages seven. Parrott drops it off for Bransford, swings it over to Harper, and one of those unforced turnovers that uh, we talked about, not yeah. only me and you, but Coach Knapp talked about at the half that yeah. you just can't have them. No. Coach Knapp's done, still doing a nice job substituting, and I think ultimately that's going to wear Ohio Christian down here. Cox out across the timeline, trying to cut into a seven-point deficit, hands it off to Parsons, works it over to Puckett. As they play give and go, Cox has it along the far wing, and, and Cox is one of those players you like to see her get a little bit a little more assertive on yep. the offensive end. She's got the handles. Yep. She just needs to be able to finish. Yep. As Puckett has it, 15-footer, too strong. Backside rebound, nice box out there by Parrott. I like the hustle by the, little, the Parrott girl. She's, she's all over the place. I think her game's going to come together for her. Well, Norton for three, too strong. Parrott, the freshman out of Ross. Of course, the Ohio State University. As she went to Ohio State first before transferring here. Good pickup for the Cougars. Nice drop in for Puckett, and she got it. Nice lefty finish. She's got three in the second half. She's got seven for the game, and once again, back to a two-possession game, down to five, 420 to go in the half. Kylie Bomar gets the offense set up, hands it off to Bransford. Bransford backs on her way in, 10-footer, and she's going to go the line, and that's going to be Roberts' first. Yep. And that's the one thing. If you're going to take it to the hoop, you got to hope that you can pick up those – those cheap points as they foul and, you know, get themselves in foul trouble, which, again, we talked about the depth on the bench is a problem. Bransford with four points on the night. She averages 9.8. Right, As got. I think we might have a cut, and that's what we have. Yeah. We have a cut on Bransford. They're waiting for their trainer to come over and clean it up. And now we're going to get a timeout by Coach Cox and the Eagles. Yeah, I thought I heard the, the official say 20 seconds. But CC is going to yep. call the, the timeout. 4.13 to go in the half. Bransford's going to go line shooting two. We said it, and, and I totally did the broadcaster jinx. But <laughs> only one foul in that first half. And, and well, we, we've uh, already... Uh, one million percented uh, exceeded that here in the third <laughs> quarter alone. Uh, it, Thirty-five combined. Yeah, it always happens that way. Well, that balances out. It does. It does. Which is good and bad because you get the end of a game and they have seven extra fouls that they can use to prolong it another yeah. hour. Yeah. Well, and you know, I think the the fouls come too. With the more you get an inside game, the more you're, you're taking the ball to the hoop, you start to see the fouls pick up. And in the first half. We saw, you know, a lot of perimeter play and things like that. So I think we're going to see more fouls just by the nature of how they're playing it. Bransford's first. She got it. The freshman product out of Stevens High up in Dayton, the six-foot freshman. You see the potential she has both on the inside and the outside. Mm -hmm. Does Bransford as she gets the second. Nice Nothing job. Nothing but net. She's got six. She averages 10. Dinsmore gets it over to Bear. She's guarded by Harper. Dribbles it off her foot, picks up her dribble. Able to get it over the Robert. She's guarded by Bransford. 
As Dinsmore now works at the offense, back over to Puck as she thought about the three, but wisely passes it back yep. over to Dinsmore. She wants a three, and that's too strong. Nice tip out by Kylie Bomar over to get it over to Harper. This is an important possession for Cincinnati Christian because they've been on that brink of getting away from them, and it's just hovered around seven or eight points. As Dinsmore once again in the passing lane. She does a little bit of everything. Yeah, she does. And you see, also see flashes from Roberts. You can tell why, why she averages 12 and 8. Right. As Bomar Ooh. has it blocked by Dinsmore over nice. to Norton for three. She got it. Or Tolson. She triples. She's the first one in the double figures. She has 11. She averages 11. And for the third time, the Eagle leads up to 10. And now we're going to get a travel on Baird out top. Unforced turnover against Ohio Christian. And CCU has a chance to really start to put their foot down on things here with 3.15 to go in the third. If Tolson can catch fire and drop a couple more threes, uh, Cincinnati Christian is going to be in a good situation. I believe that's her third three of the game. She's three of five from downtown, and she's been on a tear the last week. As Bransford misses that one. Dinsmore. Once again, a uh, stat sheet stuffer. Yep. As Roberts oh, has it. Nice. There's a nice take. And that's exactly what I was talking about. When she plays like that, she can be unstoppable, and that will help, up, help open up uh, Cox and Dinsmore yep. and yep. those. It's just one of those you just got to get her to play that way for, for 40 minutes, right. and she has, but you see it there. That's why you get excited about yeah. watching a player like her. Yeah, and it's it's nice when you know you have them for a few years, unlike in Division One where you're, they're one and done. As Bransford has the top, she wants a three, but no. Beermacher gets caught camping in the lane. Can't watch the paint dry. 2.23 no, to go in the know. third, and it's a 35-27 oh. lead. Yeah, and just like that, as we talked about it, you know, that's it, that 10-point thing, you know, it looks good, but now they're down to eight, and they can cut this to six. And that 10-point lead, and for hockey fans, I kind of compare it to a two-goal lead. It's the worst lead to have in, in, in a game because the next goal, you lose everything. Yes. Or you put the game away. Exactly right. Bomar nice. drops it over to Harper. She got it. Nice transition. Right there, you see Kylie Bomar and what she can do. In the open court. Yeah, and as you said, that was a nice transition play. And if they can finish on those, they'll be able to have their way tonight. But she's kind of in that Roberts mold. If, if she can be more aggressive on the offensive end as Dinsmore, short rebound comes out to Tolson. But when she wants to be aggressive and put it all together for 40 minutes. Oh, Tolson takes it all the way. The sky is the limit for Kylie Bomar. She could be a really special player, but... You got to learn to play at this level as Roberts. Oh, there she is again, she plus finishes. one. Yep. And just, well second. And just as we said, they moved it out to 10. And then it's, it's the chess match at this point as far as uh, just trying to get that run that's going to finish the game. But sometimes you're a player like Roberts, you see Bomar starting to go off. You start to see Tolson go off. And all of a sudden, it gets that, that inner competitor in right. you going. Because she's got seven here in the second half. Totally different player than what we saw in the first half. She has right. 11 for the game. And there's a turnover. And she gets the ball. That's why you keep your hands up in the passing lanes for you watching at home. 1.14 to go out across the timeline. Both teams, though, very fundamental on the, on the defensive end. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of good defense, as the score would indicate. Good talk. Good communication, too, as Roberts once again. Hook, hook shot. You might want to get a timeout if you're Coach Cox. It's down to a five-point lead, but we saw this at the end of the second quarter as well. Nice Caldwell, pick up by Roberts. Three ball. She oh. got it. That's an answer. Her second triple tonight. She averages six. She has six. And it's back up to an eight-point game. They answer Ohio Christian once again. Floater in the lane. Too strong by, Be by Baird. Uh, rebound comes over to Caldwell. Caldwell pushing the pace. She's got Tolson. You can't leave her open, and that's Ooh. why Tolson is on fire. Four of six. She's got 14. She averages 11, and it's the biggest lead of the night. It's up to 11. It was just at five, a quick 6-0 spurt by the Eagles. Yeah, Ohio Christian really does need to score this time down. 
Dinsmore <laughs> with the take. Nice give and go. Roberts with Roberts. and Dinsmore. Bomar oh. at the buzzer. Oh. Too strong. But CCU with a 21-point outburst. Able to extend the lead out to 43-34 at the end of the third quarter as we're going to step aside for 30 seconds as you're watching Ohio Christian Basketball on CampusNation.com and 106.9. Begin the next step of your life at Ohio Christian University, one of the nation's fastest-growing nonprofit universities. Earn an accredited associate, bachelor, or master's degree entirely online or attend class once a week at one of 11 convenient locations. Programs range from business and human services to IT and RN to BSN and more. Call today, 855-OCU-GRAD or on the web at enroll.ohiochristian.edu. And welcome back to the broadcast booth alongside Bill Rayback. My name is Rob Roberts, and now we're seeing a game of spurts, a little spurtability yep. as I like to say it. But Tolson v. Roberts in this fourth quarter is going to determine who wins this game. And a big triple also by Caldwell, able to, to snap a quick 5-0 run that Ohio Christian had. They had it at 5. CCU hits back-to-back -back triples. Tolson got one in transition, and all of a sudden they look up and they're like, yeah. It's, it's a three-possession game again. Well, let's see if we see more transition out of Cincinnati Christian, which I think you will because, as we talked about, with the numbers disparity, we may see Cincinnati Christian be able to run Ohio Christian right into the floor at this point. We'll the see one if, thing is, is they've been resilient as Ohio they have, Christian. They've they been have. able to they, – they keep chipping away, but sometimes you waste all your energy to get to a certain point, and you can't get over that, that hump. That's a great point, and I think now you see that nine-point lead. Is this going to be more the is this going to be more the rule than the exception? Where now it hovers at nine, and they bump it out to twelve, thirteen. And if that's the case, it's going to be it's going to be difficult for Ohio Christian to get back into the game. And Sailor Norton a little frustrated with that with that call, and, and I get it. Might have been a travel, but Roar's going to go the line for shooting two. 9.52 to go here in the fourth quarter, 43-34 in favor of the home Eagles. Ohio Christian Roar's at the line. She averages one and a half points a game, and she gets the first. She matches her season. Three of six at the line for a team. And any time you have a, a, a two to three possession game, those missed free throws loom large. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no doubt. As she gets a second, uh, the shot like that doesn't look like a two-point score, but she has two. Hill out across the timeline for Coach Cox's Eagles. 9.45 to go in the fourth. 43 Eagles, 36 Ohio Christian. Sailor Norton swings it over to Petty. Wide open three for Parrott, and that's going to be out of bounds off Petty. But Parrott had a wide open three she, and she good just forced look. it. You, yeah. You got a chance to set the puppies, you set the puppies. Yep, you set it up and you nail it. And and she rushed it. She knew she was wide open and get a little excited. Sometimes. And she'll yeah, and she'll learn that. She'll learn that. Baird out across the timeline, seven point deficit. And now we're gonna get a nickel and dimer on Petty, and that's gonna be her first. And the, file, uh, the fouls are piling up now for each side. Yeah. Caldwell out, Bransford in. Right after you, your comments, Rob, about a clean first half. and then right. the <laughs> We do some of the men's games, and our color guy had talked about uh, Blake Walsman, who is one of the top five players in the nation at this level. Uh -huh. he, is, he goes, oh, he's an 89% free throw shooter. He missed five in a row after that point. <laughs> and that guy doesn't miss five in a row of anything. Nice dump off to Dinsmore, and they're going to wave off the shot. They're going to call a foul before the shot. Nice backdoor play, though. I mean, it, would, it was pretty. Parrott is going to pick up her first, and that's already four team fouls here, or three team fouls here in the fourth quarter with 9.04 to go. Mm -hmm. If Ohio Christian is able to stay aggressive and make free throws, right. you're scoring points without the clock moving. That's almost a two for one. And that's the way to get back into the game. And there's oh. a bad inbounds pass. Bransford on Dinsmore stops, puts it up, and that's one you just got. You can't stop and hesitate. No. You got to take it, and put it straight yeah. back up and in. Dinsmore drops gotta it off the bear. Got to take it hard to the hoop on that. Puckett wisely passes it. She thought about it. Yes, she did. <laughs> she has it at the top. Yep. 
Throws this one up wildly. Nice backside rebound nice. by Roar. Good. And they're going to get a foul maybe on Kylie Bomar in the back end. And now we're going to get a technical foul. And nice job on the offensive boards by Ohio Christian. Um, you know. So now Bransford is going to pick up her second and third because the third she picked up a technical for a little uh, chirping after the whistle. 8.37 to go. You got a chance at a four-point swing and the ball back. This could be a six- or seven-point swing. Yes. Roar at the line. She's two for two. She has two. She averages one and a half. The righty, nothing but net on all three so far tonight. She's got a nice arc on the ball. And right there, it, that could be the turning point in a basketball game. Definitely could be. The difference between winning and losing and being able to talk to Coach Nab and, and Coach Cox the, the way we do. When you're this young, you have to learn how to win. It's easy to find ways to lose. It's, it's harder to find ways to win, especially when something like this, you hit a little adversity as well. Right. As Roar misses her first time, she is now four or five at the line. It's down to a five-point game. You can make this a four-point game. Yeah. As they're on a quick seven-point run, if she can hit this. A big break for the kids, too, with so many foul shots here. It was 11 points a few moments ago. She makes this. It's at four, and she got it. 7-0 run, the largest run either way of the night. We've only had three lead changes and two ties, and those came rather early. Kylie Bomar along the far wing. Can the Witten Woods product lead CCU to their fourth win of the year? Caldwell has it on the block. Over to Tolson. Tolson in the lane. Caldwell for three. Her third triple. Her second in a row with 8.15 to go. That's how you answer a 7-0 yep. run. She has nine all here in the second half. Definitely needed that to cool off the... That's the difference right there in the senior out of Dayton, Ohio. Yep. Roar into the lane, and she'll get a foul on Hill, and that's going to be her first. She's going back to the line here, and that's where she's been dangerous. Well, she's getting quite comfortable yep. there. She's been yep. there six times. If she shoots any more, she's, she's going to have to change her address. She's going to have to change her average. <laughs> you got to be careful. <laughs> At one and a half points a game. And she got it. <laughs> Six of seven at the line. Roberts back in the game. Puckett getting her first break of the night. Puckett's played a, a good game as well. She's a solid player. And she got them both <clears throat> seven of eight at the line. It's a five-point game. We're inside eight minutes to go from Jill Rendell Court on the campus of Cincinnati Christian University. Stephanie Hill has along the far side. Hands it off to Kylie Bomar. Bomar in the oh. lane. Has it blocked away by Roar. Yeah, nice nice defense there. They faced her as she dr drove in and kept verticality and knocked the ball out. Nice uh, aggressive take, though, by Kylie Bomar. Now we're going to have an offensive foul on Caldwell, and she's got three. That's a big third foul for the senior out of Dayton, Ohio, at Aponitz High School. Dinsmore might be a little dinged up by now. She caught up. Knee to the thigh. Out top, Roberts has it. Trying to get some help. Swings it over to Baird. 7.28 to go. And that's going to be an offensive oh, yeah. foul. You can't extend the off arm. You can't get that chicken wing out extended. That's an easy call when you have the ball at the top. Yeah, and it was couldn't have been any more obvious when she was standing right next to the official when she did it. If you're going to do that, you got to hide it a little bit, you know? If you're going to do that, you do that underneath in a crowd of people. Exactly, exactly. Not in the middle of the floor. Bomar out across the timeline, working the Eagle offense. 7.20 to go. Caldwell, who has three triples here in the second half, works the offense over to Hill, over to Bomar at the top. Bomar over to Norton in the lane. Does the freshman. Nice she rotation. got it. Plus one. Nice Sailor. ball movement by Cincinnati Christian on that. Roar, that's her first. Norton, the freshman, averages eight. She's got four, and she has a chance to make this a seven-point ball game. Two strong. CCU's first miss or three or four at the charity stripe. Dinsmore, and you got to wonder how much more she has left in her tank. Does Dinsmore? Know. 
She's walking up the court right now. Robert, so. spin move into the lane. Nice defense there by Caldwell. Bomar then comes over and strips it, and that's going to be a foul on Parsons. That'll be her first. That's why they teach you hand straight up. Yep. Good yep. no call there by the official. Yep. Yeah, and a lot of kids, you know, a lot of times the fans get more upset when somebody goes straight up, but they understand that that's yep. the right of the defensive player when they do that. They have the same right to an area as does an offensive player. Exactly. Defensive player, problem. they get that little arch in the back. Yep, yep. Harper picks up her dribble dangerously. Might need a timeout. And that's what we're going to get. Smart timeout there yes. by Coach Cox. 6.34 to go. He's going to get a quick 20-second timeout. And we're going to keep it here with the 20 as CCU is holding on to a seven-point lead that was just four moments ago. It's fluctuated between uh, four and 11. But once again, you waste that energy to get there, and sometimes you just don't have enough to get the, over the, the hump. Finish, yeah. And that's the thing. Or you turn. I mean, what you see a lot of times is teams will get back to where they can. And they're in striking distance, and then they throw the ball away when the next time down. Well, so. you spend all that energy. Yes. And it's not only physical; it's mental energy. And then you got people like Dinsmore, and we wonder about her going down the stretch. Roberts has had a great second half. She's got nine. Uh, here in the second half, as only three players have scored for Ohio Christian, she's got nine of the, of the team's 15, uh, 16 points as three uh, us go to Puckett. Um, I mean, Roars hit it at the free throw line, but as Bomar, and she's going to go to the line to shoot two, nice take. Yeah, and when we, you know, you look at the minutes in the first half <clears throat> for Ohio Christian, you have uh, Puckett had 19 minutes and Dinsmore was next with 15. And we've seen pretty much the same thing in this half. Is they're they're the Iron Men of the of the Ohio Christian squad. Bomar hits her first. I forgot about Bear, uh, Roar. Roar has seven because she's seven and eight at the free throw line. Yep. As a rare miss at the line for Kylie Bomar, she's got nine in the game. She averages thirteen, and it's an eight point game with six twenty to go. Roberts has it at the free throw line, too strong. And that's going to be out of bounds off. How that happened, I don't know. But that was the same thing we talked about, uh, setting the puppies for paired early. Roberts, I don't think she realized how wide open she was because she's just not used to being that wide open. No, she's not. And nice stale there by, not going to call it double dribble on Kylie Bomar. Opportunity for the Cougars missed. As the Eagles knock it out of bounds. Still a little bit sloppy on the ball handling, though, Rob. I mean, it's not been clean throughout the game on some of the even short passes. Dinsmore has it along the far wing, working on Stephanie Hill. She puts the ball on the floor, 17-footer, too strong, gets her own rebound, too strong again. Rebound, Roar, rebound, Caldwell. Three shots within 17-foot, and they got zero points. Bomar... Pushes the tempo for the Eagles. Now backs out, guarded by Dinsmore. Big possession here for Cincinnati Christian with a little over five minutes to go in the half. Hill over to Bomar. A dangerous pass. Bomar, elbow extended, too mm. strong. I think Hill, her own teammate, might have obstructed, and obstructed the view. Yep, I believe you're right. As Baird has that's a double dribble, and they're going to say she just bobbled it. Near side <laughs> now, Roberts. 524 to go on the far elbow. Spin move into the lane. Triple team. Roar. 15 footer. She got it. She's got nine. This could be a career high for Roar, for all we know. Tolson fakes oh, the nice three move. into the lane. Dinsmore got her hand on it, and it's going to stay here. Usually they call the hand in the cookie jar on that one. Yeah, Dinsmore yeah. is not going to get the call. Six point game, though. 505. Still could go either way with a quick run. Yep. Very true. CCU, the Eagles just with six points here and nine next quarter. And as you for said, Rob, this, the 10 point lead, which the Eagles have had for a good part of the night, is like that two two goal lead in hockey. Is It's just a false Worst sense of security. Sport. You can lax. Yep. yep. And it's back up to an eight point game. Kylie Bomar. With 11, Cox on the back end screen, and that's going to be a turnover as Bransford was just standing there, and Cox getting up uh, limping a little bit, a little uh, stunner. 
Cox almost made a good save on that, though. She tried to knock the ball off the the Cougars, and uh, good heads-up play just didn't wasn't able to pull it off. Bomar, the Wittenwood sophomore, out across the timeline to Bransford. Over to Tolson, Norton, over to Kylie Bomar, back over to Tolson, dumps it into Bransford on the block. Working on Roar, and that's going to be a foul on 22, and that'll be her second. Kyra Moore. Bransford to the line. She's two for two there tonight. She has six in the game. She's got seven, and I don't think there was one piece of the rim she did not hit there. <laughs> no. It wasn't a clean one, but they all count the same. It took a, it took a tour around Cincinnati, and it, it finished did. in the bottom of the bucket. It leads back up to nine. It's been ten four times, 11 one other time, as Bransford got them both. This is where the defense has got to really clamp down and try to put the seal on the game. Cox has it. It's a 10-point game with 4-10 to go. Puckett checks back into the Ohio Christian lineup. She dumps it off for Dinsmore. Drops it over to Roberts, and she got it. Roberts answers. She was kind of quiet there for about five, six minutes she after was. erupting for nine points in the third quarter. Her first bucket of the fourth is in an eight-point game. Caldwell on the floor, drops it over to Bransford, over to Tolson, into the lane, and that's going to stay here. But Bransford was not expecting the pass, expected no. Tolson to lay that up. Some nice ball movement there, maybe one too many passes on that. Caldwell over to Tolson, into the lane, 12-footer, and then I'll say she traveled. Unforced turnover there for Tolson who has 14 points, she averages 11, but the last four she's averaged 19 and a half, and she averages 52% from downtown during that stretch. She's four of six tonight. Instant yep. offense is Tolson. A lot of patience. Roar for three. She got <laughs> another one. She is on fire. She's got 12 in the second half. Half of those at the line. You talk about sandbagging a, a score sheet. <laughs> she averages 1.4. They must have the decimal point wrong because she's already got 12. Yes, indeed. Transfer tries to answer. No, backside rebound, Dinsmore. It's a two-possession game. 3.05 to go in the game. I don't know why Roar's passing it. Yeah. Over to Cox along the near side. For our radio listeners, Ohio Chris is moving right to left. 2.55 to go. 53 CCU, 48 OCU. <laughs> Puckett in the lane. That's an offensive foul. That's an easy call against Puckett. You cannot lower your shoulder in the lane like nope. that. She was out of control. Big, big play there. That's a big lost possession. It's a five point. You could have made that a three or a two point game with that possession as Bomar out across the timeline. Not a, not a great move by Puckett. And, uh, you know, she could have kicked that without having to do that. But, you know. Live and learn. You live and learn, right? Bomar, guarded by Dinsmore, gets, comes off the screen by Colwell. Oh, Dinsmore. And she stole the cookie from oh, the jar. Dinsmore on a one-on-none -on -one breakaway, and it's a three-point ball game. They should She's have one of the security guards put the handcuffs on her right now for that one. Yeah. In huh. some in some states, that's a felony. Oh, yeah. Yes. She's <laughs> got 12. Yes, it is. Tolson over to Caldwell on the far elbow. Then Kylie Bomar. She has a block by Roar. Wow. Possession's going to stay here. 13 on the clock. And yeah, we wow. heard we heard hardly anything from uh, Kyra Moore there in the Aurora in the first half. And this second half, first she's half, been, the first 17 games, yeah, she's she's been on fire tonight. She got 12. Norton has it. Dumps it in to Bransford. Over to Caldwell for three. Too strong, rebound Puckett. And then OC went over the backboard. And it's going to be OCU ball, 2.01 to go. They can tie it for the first time since the opening quarter yep. when it was 4-4. Four to four. Puckett has it just inside the three-point line. Hands it off to Roberts, working on Caldwell. Dinsmore puts the ball on the floor, dumps it into Cox, and she Ooh. got it. Her first two of the night. A one-point game. And we've got a timeout, Cincinnati Christian. One point game, 142 to go. And we've seen this, be, well, for the people that follow CCU here on, uh, as we're also uh, 
live streaming the game on ccuathletics.com uh, as well. But unfortunately for CCU, they've seen this a few times. They get a big lead in the fourth. And a couple times they've been able to overcome that in the final minute. But we've also seen a handful of other times where they just can't hold on to that lead, and that's part of that freshman-sophomore learning curve. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, the thing is here with the 53-52, now we're going to see what team can handle the pressure the best here. And that's where those senior uh, leaders, Caldwell, the one senior for uh, for CCU, yep. uh, she could come huge into this. I mean, when you go up and down to CCU roster, it's freshman, sophomore, senior, junior, sophomore, freshman, 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 junior, freshman, junior. And, and, and it's the freshmen that are playing are playing the minutes. Yes, yeah. And, you know, that's a good thing for the future, but, you know, you don't want to. There's growing sit, pains. Yeah, the growing pains might be a. A reach in at the wrong time. So we'll see. We'll see which team grows up the fastest here. And your decision-making gets sped up, especially when you're going against the upperclassmen. Uh, every level that you go up, the players are fa- faster, better, stronger, Smarter. wiser, yep. and they're on scholarship too. Yep. Yep. Bomar out across the timeline, hands it off to Tolson. Works it over to Bransford. They swing it around Caldwell. She hesitated on the three over to Norton. Over to Tolson, sorry. Bransford now has it. Looks at the play clock. It's at 14. Steps over to Stephanie Hill for a long two. Short rebound, Roberts. They can take Can Ohio Christian their first lead of the night. A big defensive uh, stand here for the Cougars is needed. CCU has led for over 30 minutes of this basketball game. And that's an inadvertent pass. Drops it off to Roberts. She got it. And the first lead of the game there. Their first lead. Their biggest lead. The fourth lead chain to the nine. We're inside one minute. Wow. Bransford has it on the near side. Tolson back over to Bransford. Into the lane. Drops it off for Coldwell to Hill. Hill being guarded by Roberts. She's trying to work her off the dribble. Spin move into the lane. She oh. got it. They're going to wave it off. They're going to say she slid the pivot foot and traveled. As Norton checks into the lineup, Hill checks out. That's a huge turnover, but 39.8 seconds. You can play solid defense because unless they triple, it's a one-possession game. You don't need to foul here. And based on what we've seen, Rob, I, I'm, I'm not really worried about the three-pointer because Ohio Christian wants to get the ball inside. So at the very worst, unless you foul, as not, Cox might have got away with a double dribble there, not to interrupt, but Puckett right. has it. That's right. Uh, you know, at the very worst, they shouldn't be down by more than three. Roberts into the lane, working on Caldwell. She got it with 15 seconds to go. This could be a timeout here. Timeout, Coach Cox. 13.6 to go. Their biggest lead of the night is three. They pull this game out. They might have only led this game for 38 seconds, but the only <laughs> time that it matters is when you lead end. if it's at zero. Yeah, you're right about that. As a as a as a Michigan person that went to Michigan State a couple of years ago, the football team only led two games. They won two games, and the only time they led was when the scoreboard said zeros, and that was the game at Michigan and the game against Ohio State. And that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if you beat Michigan and Ohio State in any year, that's a pretty good year, especially the other team in the state. But it doesn't matter how long you lead, as long as you lead. And right now, Ohio Christian, you got to give them credit. Down by uh, nine at the end of the third quarter. They've outscored them by 12 here in the fourth, and they have a three-point lead with 13 seconds to go. Well, Kiara Rohr, you know, a lot of this is going to come back to her. She's been really a steadying force from a scoring standpoint for Ohio Christian, which they met were – we're missing most of the first half. Bomar picks up the ball out across the timeline. Ten seconds to go. Picks up her dribble. Oh. Has it tipped away, but able to get it back there. Trying to get it to Tolson. Bomar over to Caldwell for three. Too strong. Rebound, Dinsmore. And Ohio Christian comes into Jill Randall <laughs> Court and pulls off a fourth quarter comeback to improve the 9-9 nine and nine on the season. And for CCU, that is a devastating loss considering they had a nine-point lead at the end of three and led by as many as 11. You know, Rob, what you got to do if you're Cincinnati Christian is you just have to find the highlights of this and the fact that they had 10-point, 11-point leads in this game and didn't close the door. That's going to give Coach a good 
starting point, said this is where we can go from. We need to slam the door when we're in situations like this and not let teams back into games. And, and, then, for, and for Ohio Christian, I mean, uh, for them, it was just never give up. I mean, they were not spectacular shooting-wise. Uh, they, they banged, they banged, and uh, everything worked out for them. So, uh, you know, our hat's off to Ohio Christian for a, a strong effort and a good comeback. Excellent comeback by, by the road team. And they always tell you, when your home game split on the road, you're going to have a heck of a year. Yeah. And it came in. You can say they stole it. You can say whatever. But at the end of the day, a W is a W. And there's a big difference between 8-10 and 9-9 and nine and nine, just in your psyche. Well, and, you know, when you have a, a player that's averaging one and a half points a game like Kyra uh, Roar, and she ends up with 12, I mean, you don't factor that into I mean, if you're, you're game planning, you're not looking at her putting 11 points over her average in there. And how do you know those type of things? But that's the beauty of basketball is it can be that, you know, seventh, eighth person off the bench that all of a sudden throws in 20 and you win. So, you know, nice job by Ohio Christian. And as I say, Cincinnati Christian, uh, a lot of positives, and they can definitely build from that kind of loss. And, you know, you hope the sting of that kind of loss at the end of a game is the kind that means more to them than when you get blown out by 20. Because you get blown out by 20, you might not see that you could have won the game. But in this kind of game, you can build on that and hopefully come back and and, uh, have success after it. And then also the the stat stuff. And Dinsmore averages 12. She scored 12, but she does so much more than just score points. Yeah, you know, Dinsmore is the one that quietly puts 12 on the board. And picks up the she gets the double double the ten rebounds the twelve points, she picks up the the scraps you know there's a, a rebound laying on the floor she picks it up and gets it, uh, we saw that steal, which you know we talked about she should be getting escorted out of here by the FBI in a few minutes, I mean nice job there so yeah Dinsmore can't say enough about the steady play on her behalf. And then for CCU, as the home Eagles fought a 3-13 and on the season, 2 for Perry, 11 Bomar, 10 for Caldwell on the second half. She had a big second half. Yes, she did. 2 for Hill, 14 for Tolson, including four more triples. That's who they were trying to set up on that three-point play, but yep. good job by Ohio Christian. 4 for the freshman Norton, 8 for Bransford, 2 for Harper. You add that all up, that's 53 points. As CCU falls to three and thirteen on the season for Ohio Christian with a W, three and two now in their last five, nine and nine overall. Two for Cock, twelve for Dinsmore, seven for Puckett, twelve for War, nineteen for Roberts. Only five players scored, but you add that all up, that's fifty-six points and a huge, huge twenty-two point fourth quarter yep. as they find a way to win. They only led for 38 seconds out of the game, but when you leave with all zeros, that's all that matters. And, and that's true. I mean, the bottom line is what is the score at the end of the game? And Ohio Christian was able to play well enough to pull it out at the end. Second half, Ohio Christian shot 51% from the field, 41 for the game. But the one thing each team's going to want want to fix. 25 turnovers for Ohio Christian, 20 for CCU. Anytime you have 25 turnovers, I'm pretty sure you don't you don't expect to win a game. That's no. 25 lost possessions. That, that would have been, let's just say you lose half of that, you could have had 80 points here tonight, yes. and it wouldn't have even come down in the last minute. Yeah, and, and you know, I, so and if I recall the first half stats, 14. I, they almost, again, we talked about cutting them down in the second half. It didn't change that much in the second half. We saw about the same thing. You know, we saw another 10 or 12 turnovers in each half, and and that's not going to get it done. Uh, One team cleans that up a little bit more, and as you say, it can be a 20-point win for somebody. And we're going to step aside for a few minutes as we get you ready for the, uh, the men's game. As CCU will look for a win number nine as they are 8 and 10 on the year as they will, take, as they will battle Ohio Christian. And once again, it was a good one. It, it was, Rob, and a pleasure uh, working this game and looking forward to working the next game with you. And once again, our final score was Ohio Christian coming on the road in the Jill Rundle Court and pulling out a thrilling 56 53 uh, victory. As we thank you for tuning in to CampusNation.com and 106 Point Line for Bill Rayback. My name is Rob Roberts. We'll join you momentarily as we continue coverage of NAIA basketball. 
106.9 WZAALP, Jeffersonville. Begin the next step of your life at Ohio Christian University, one of the nation's fastest growing nonprofit universities. Earn an accredited associate, bachelor, or master's degree entirely online or attend class once a week at one of 11 convenient locations. Programs range from business and human services to IT and RN to BSN and more. Call today, 855-OCU-GRAD or on the web at enroll.ohiochristian.edu. Oh yeah, well that's what they say. <laughs> the bill is always nothing. Uh, that's good. You gotta keep it fun, you know? Gotta keep it fun. Okay, well, I'm gonna run down. They said your card was full for a second. They said card full for a minute. They said it for about 10 seconds right before we went off the air. It's recording down there. It's not recording Well, it didn't say it until the end. It said card full. It was up for about 5 to 10 seconds and it disappeared.